This next guy, he is also a regular. Yeah, more, more, more. He's a regular at the business. This fantastic showcase down in the Mission every Wednesday, right? Yes. And he will be hosting the Halloween show at the Punchline, the showcase on, uh, on Halloween. So get on a costume and go check it out. Trick or treat. Give a big round of applause for Sean Keane. Thank you very much. Have another hand for my father, Bob Rubin. He's my, he's my dad. He won't admit it, but it's going to happen. Can't believe they're auctioning all this stuff off. This piano, Zach Galifianakis played that piano. That guitar, Tommy Smothers played that guitar. This cable, Lenny Bruce tied off with every single night. It's living history here in San Francisco. I'm a little drunk right now. I've been drinking since Saturday night when the Giants clinched. Spraying strangers with champagne, ran out of champagne, switched to malt liquor. But this morning I was just kind of spraying pedestrians with a garden hose. Just being like, Giants! I try to, I try to go to a lot of games. I'm still a, a struggling comedian though, so I end up going to more games at the Oakland Coliseum. Because you can, you can go to the Oakland Coliseum for $2, right? And it does not even have to be American money. No, it doesn't. You bring Monopoly money, they'll let you in. Pepsi can, probably. Potato chip that looks like Jose Canseco's face, you're in. You're, you're celebrating Oakland A's baseball. But you never forget what park you're at, right? Because the Giants, they spend tens of millions of dollars on the fan experience. The A's spend tens of dollars on the fan experience. They sweep the stadium before playoff games. And... They've not been in the playoffs for a few years. But yeah, you go to a Giants game, you, the, the entertainment's incredible. You go after the second inning, they've got a cable car race that they show on the scoreboard. It's computer animated, it's 3D, geographically accurate, whole thing's on a 250-foot plasma TV in center field. Then you go to Oakland, and they have dot racing. <laughs> Three dots just moving slowly around an oval, and that's projected on a bed sheet that one of the players has brought from home and just nailed up on the right field wall. And all 98 people in the crowd are, are getting into fist fights over whether the red dot cheated or not. It's great. <laughs> We've also got a thing in San Francisco, the Visa fan of the game. You take your Visa card out, wave it in the air. You win fabulous prizes. They have that in Oakland. They do not have your waiver credit card, though, because that, that is not safe to do at the Oakland Coliseum. They have you wave a BART ticket. Not even a clipper card, a BART ticket. And I don't even think it's sponsored by BART either. No, they just want to make sure everybody has a ride home after the game. Just too many nights, parking lot full of people just going, Raiders, Raiders. Because Hayes fans are really just Raider fans who haven't done time yet. Like they haven't been brought to justice for their crimes. That's where Raider fans come from. You go to prison in California, you have three options. Become a Norteño, you join the Sereños, or you join the Raider Nation. That's how you protect yourself on the inside. The silver and black's got your back. So that's why the Raiders are the only NFL team that pays their players in cigarettes, and it's tough to get free agents. Look that. Last time I went to a Giants game, they were getting killed. They were down 10 nothing, And the eighth inning, they still played Don't Stop Believing over the PA. It just sounded like they were taunting the Giants. Like, don't stop believing. <laughs> and I started complaining about it. My friend said, you can't say that. That's a San Francisco anthem, you know? It's a great song. Journey, the journey of a thousand notes begins with a single drunken marina girl. I think Sherman Mao said that. Here's the thing. Don't stop believing. Not a San Francisco anthem. There's a couple clues in the lyrics. First of all, the lead character in Don't Stop Believing is a city boy Born and raised in South Detroit. That's your first geographic clue. <laughs> Might not be a San Francisco specific song. And then they talk about that there's a singer in a smoky room, the smell of wine and cheap perfume. Not in San Francisco, because that bar is smoke free. It's fragrance free. There's no singer. It's a transgender spoken word poet. And the only thing you smell is marijuana from the back and then just hobo urine. Just an ambient <laughs> aroma of hobo urine. Then they talk about how they take a midnight train going anywhere. Can't take a midnight train going anywhere to San Francisco. Take a 1208 train to Pittsburgh Bay Point or a 1212 train to Mil Millbrae or Coma. 
cannot take a midnight train going anywhere. Come on. Come on, Steve Perry. And then in the end, they're talking. They're just rocking out. They're talking about, don't stop believing, streetlight people. Whoa, whoa. Look, if you see someone under a streetlight after midnight in San Francisco, you will stop believing. You might stop believing for the rest of your life. You might. I do watch a lot of... A lot of sports. Sometimes I get my news from sports inadvertently. Like, when Osama bin Laden got killed, I found out from ESPN. I was watching baseball, and they just cut away to the announcement. Obama's making the announcement that, that the Navy SEALs got bin Laden. And for some reason, they kept the ESPN news border around the shot. Like, they were breaking the story. Like, they had boots on the ground. Chris Berman was the guy who was going to break the story. And it kind of looked like... Obama was just going to sit in the Budweiser hot seat and field <laughs> questions afterwards. And like, Bin Laden had just announced his retirement from the NBA. <laughs> and then they cut to Sports Center and they had, the, they had the little headshot of Bin Laden up in the upper left. And it looked like they were going to do the career retrospective. <laughs> you know, like Osama Bin Laden. Quite a competitor. <laughs> Let's look at that career. 1993, Bin Laden bursts on the scene plan to carve on with the World Trade Center. Only killed five people, just didn't have the firepower. <laughs> They'd meet again. 1996, President Clinton's tour in the Philippines. Al-Qaeda makes an assassination order that is intercepted by the Secret Service. They divert the motorcade. Clinton gets the W. 2001, the rematch. Two planes hit the World Trade Center. President Bush caught napping. He's reading a book about a goat. Looks like George was the goat on that morning. 2005, NATO troops surround Bin Laden in the hills outside of Kandahar. OBL spots an opening in the defense. He goes to safety. Moving pretty well for an old man on dialysis. Wouldn't get a shot at him for another five years. Finally, 2011, Abbottabad, Pakistan. Talk about a bad place to hide. <laughs> Navy SEALs storm the compound. They shoot, they score, taking down the number one seed on the FBI's most wanted list. And that is your Sierra Mist play <laughs> of the day. All right, thank you very much, Purple Under. No miss you. Thanks. <laughs>